viewers and welcome to another episode of The Running Mech, where I'm no longer making Lancer battle reports solely by myself. Instead, I have found some help, from others. Yes, I finally decided to get actual players into the game because I figured, if one brain isn't enough for shenanigans, why not five? So I just game mastered a one shot session at license level 6 like normal with four players, a Kyrio, SGT Briar, Hydronin, and 17. All of them have certainly given me a whole new perspective on the game, which I will share with you right now. Let's talk about the session, this is basically a boss arena match, with the first ultra NPC to be seen in the series. This arena is somewhat wide open, with pillars that stretched all the way to the ceiling 10 spaces above. I will also be using hex grid, but since roll 20 doesn't seem to like this map very much, I just went free grid, but it will work as hex for the most part. With all that done, let's actually start round 1. Before Texas Red could even gloat or monologue or even say anything, echoes of Creighton immediately barraged with everything they have, typical of a Raleigh. RPG, missile, howitzer, and auto gun, blasting the crap out of Texas Red and the veteran Pyro. Prior to that, Nilbog also throw out a lock on as a reaction to the start of Echo's turn, making their shots even more accurate. Echo's was about to move away but a thing called moving target from Texas Red persuaded otherwise. Also we forgot about the Roland Chamber which would deal even more damage to Texas Red so that could have been even worse, but then I also forgot siege armor that Pyro has, so that could have gone better. Veteran Wild Pyro moved next, forward straight to the team, also forgot about Acrobat which would have been helpful here, and then spewed out flame at them, burning up one trick pony, then projected the fire shield behind it to protect Texas Red. This backfire real hard. Percival moved forward and set up a magnetic shield, which works perfectly against Texas Red's attack, and then shot the pyro in its face with their prototype weapon, structuring it and destroying its weapon in the process. Which might get prevented if I remember the pyro has legendary trait that can re-roll the structure roll twice, not playing Lancer for a month seriously rusted out my memory. Texas Red recovered from being nearly destroyed and shot Echoes for that attack, critting massively but only dealt near minimum amount of bonus damage. With Echoes behind the magnetic shield, this have the damage to only a 9. Then Texas Red ran the fuck away. Nilbogue rode their frame like a cowboy, more so than the actual cowboy frame, handing the control to their onboard NHP, then extinguished the burn on Pony. Am I witnessing the power of teamwork here? The NHP within the mech then locked onto Texas Red, consumed that, then first gated it with Osiris, controlling its standard move next turn, and also cooking it extra hot thanks to Hacker 1 talent. Then locked onto Texas Red again because they never moved with Spotter 2. Veteran Wild Cedar launched a mine, this mine will not damage anything but its ally, and then launched a grenade at this tightly packed group, it didn't do much but it did separate them apart. 17 was the last player to go, immediately popped death's head core power, neural shunt, then walked up the pillar to set up a sniper position and activate mark for death, that's currently blocked by a wall of fire. Also, thanks to moving target and 17 continuing to move upward, Texas Red reloaded its big iron. Unfortunately, Texas Red can't use it because Nilbog. Oh my god, I just realized Nilbog is goblin in reverse, you goddamn gremlin. Anyway, thanks to first gate, Nilbog forced Texas Red to move towards the team, and since its big iron has ordnance, it can't fire it anymore. Oh boy it would be nice if I fire the smaller iron instead. But Texas Red just locked onto pony and boosted behind a cover because Nilbog can only control its standard move. Round 1 ended, and round 2 began with reinforcements coming in, one wild cataphract, and one wild sentinel. But that didn't deter Pony from aiming at Texas Red, focusing all the accuracies from auto-stabilizing mount, tactician 2, core siphon, and a leadership dice from Percival which has turned into more damage, then crit on the goddamn attack roll, triggering even more bonus damage from mark for death. And you are probably wondering, Texas Red is in cover, 
So how did that work? Because Siege Cannon has Blast and Arcing, which can ignore cover if you shoot around the cover. Out of 7 d6 dice, 17 rolled 5 6, plus 5, dealing a total of 35 damage, enough to structure Texas Red twice over, destroying one system and impairing it, and it would have gotten worse if not for its legendary trait for rerolling the structure check. Let this be a lesson, give your ultra more protection because your players will spare none in ensuring its death. The attack also obliterated the pillar because that's how devastating it was, causing secondary explosions with Siege Specialist 3 that forced Texas Red to go down or go dead, knocking it around. Thus the first turn of round 2 ended, Jesus fucking Christ. Next turn, the wild cataphract rushed at Nilbog, firing its boarding leash to grapple it, and yoinked it away from everyone else. But it's not far enough as Percival yoinked Nilbog back with Ferris Lash, with Nilbog locking onto the cataphract in revenge. Percival then flew over the mine, which would have triggered it anyway because it's hopping mine, the one time it would be useful, I forgot somehow, and with Ace 2, boosting all the way in front of Texas Red and grappled it, which shouldn't be possible because they spent all their actions already. Then veteran Wild Cedar launched another behind Percival and fired a grenade to push them into it, stunning them. Nilbog then invaded the cataphract with Terrify from Hunter Logic, locking them in a tiny room they could never get out from, and also cooking them up extra hot with Hacker 1. They then moved behind Echoes, second gated the Wild Sentinel to make them impaired and slowed, then overcharged to make a false idol of Echoes, forcing enemies to roll a system save first before even shooting at Echoes. Veteran Wild Pyro moved towards the team, and used Explosive Jet to push everyone back, Pony held their ground, Nilbog got blown away, and Echoes, using Spaceborne 2, surfed over the wave and ended up on the other side of the Pyro, Radical. With a push from the jet, Pyro launched over Nilbog, locked onto Echoes, and made another firebreak wall. Echoes then activated Thunder God, Raleigh's core power, got up from prone, moved two spaces thanks to Spaceborne 2, then overcharged to boost behind Percival, and then stabilized to repair back to full health and clear stunned condition on Percival. At the end of their turn, Echoes reloaded all their weapons, loaded two rounds into Mjolnir, and then fired it and the auto gun as a free action at Texas Red. Yes, this is completely legal. They also loaded a special round from Walking Armory into the auto gun, this is also completely legal because the ammo case from Walking Armory actually comes as a system and thus doesn't count as a talent in modifying auto gun. Then, as if that wasn't enough, Echoes also consumed the lock-on on Texas Red when firing Jalnir for 8 damage, triggering Autopod from Nilbog that automatically hit for 3, structuring Texas Red yet again, and this time, it couldn't escape its fate. More reinforcements rushed into the room, but it was too late as their boss was already dead, or at least, their mech was. Wild Sentinel-1 struggled to move forward and fired its shotgun at Percival, it missed. Then it activated Eye of Midnight to shoot anyone that got too close. Wild Cataphract-2 rushed in and attacked Nilbog with its ram cannon, damaging it heavily with a crit thanks to its deadly trait. But it wasn't enough, until it literally walked over Nilbog trampling it and causing the first structure to the player's side, stunning Nilbog, and also forcing the pilot to move back in the suit. Wild Sentinel-1 then just ran forward and locked onto Saladin. Round 2 ended, and Round 3 began. Percival moved back towards the team, flying and boosting with overcharge, then stabilized to clear all heat and stunned condition from Nilbog. Veteran Wild Cedar moved down and launched an explosive mine before firing a grenade and knocking Percival into it severely damaging them for the first time in the entire session. One trick pony then overcharged, used external ammo feed to reload their siege cannon, and fired at the cedar with 4 accuracy from auto stabilizer, tactician, core siphon, and lock on, and with 5d6 damage thanks to nuclear cavalier and leadership dice, deal 16 damage to the cedar. Enough to structure, and in the process, destroying its weapon, again. Then one trick pony moved further up the pillar, but got damaged in the process due to overwatch from the cataphract. Wild Cataphract 2 then trampled on Percival and Nilbog, stepping on them and dodging an overwatch attack from Percival. Then, it launched a lance shot at Percival and Nilbog, jamming Percival in the process. Nilbog, sensing danger, used their gate on the nearby cataphract, stunning it, then tried to invade the veteran cedar but failed, so they overcharged again and invaded the cedar again, this time succeeding and used puppet system to move the cedar closer to its buddies. Veteran Wild Pyro then moved towards Percival and Nilbog, using explosive vent to heat them up and knock them prone, only Nilbog got knocked down. 
Echoes then took up a firing stance and fired everything it got at the cedar and cataphract, RPG, missile, howitzer, even critting, and triggering brutal one in the process, severely damaging both of them. Also we forgot about Roland Chamber again, and the cedar also has shock armor which would have worked well against main class weapons like the RPG. Then Echoes moved up, loaded two more rounds into Mjolnir and fired its auto gun at the cataphract, terminating it. Wild Sentinel 2 rushed down, tried to shoot at Echoes but the false idol confused its targeting and missed. Wild Sentinel 1 deactivated Eye of Midnight because it's useless right now and rushed towards the team too. Wild Cataphract 1 was just stuck at the corner due to terrify effect, so it's basically useless right now and it's just gonna prepare skirmish or something. Round 3 ended, and Round 4 began. Percival landed onto solid ground, activated Noah to protect everyone around him, and since it's jammed now, it just gonna ram the veteran pyro onto the ground. Nilbog also locked onto the second sentinel on this turn. Veteran wild pyro took the next turn to get up and get the fuck out. Nilbog got out of their mech again to vent heat from their mech, and then ordered Osiris to fourth gate one wild sentinel, turning it over to the player side, and invaded the cataphract again with terrify to make it stay at its corner. Also their mech got up from prone. Veteran wild cedar launched another mine, and with no grenade to knock them back, tried to grapple echoes but that damn false idol confused its targeting system again. I really should have just shot the damn idol. Then it just invaded pony to impair them because what else is it supposed to do? Oh right, I forgot. One trick pony has reached the ceiling, and then fired their siege cannon at the veteran cedar, obliterating it while they were at the brink of overheating. The only wild sentinel still in control of itself tried to invade pony to take advantage of that but failed, then it shot at echoes, but the attack missed anyway due to Noah from Percival, taking damage in return instead. Echoes then called Sisyphus out to bend probability, rolling a 17 and 1 in the process. Then at the end of its turn, two more rounds loaded into Mjolnir, and Echoes unleashed a salvo of four shots at the Sentinel, leaving it just barely alive if not for the fact that Echoes consumed Lock-On in the process, triggering Autopod from Nilbog for another 3 damage. And then used Reaction to ensure the attack roll will always be 17, ensuring kill on the sentinel. Wild Cataphract 1 was getting fuck tired on being stuck at the corner while all its friends were dead, so it just bailed the fuck out. With the last wild sentinel in control by Osiris on the player side, they have it walk over the mine so carefully placed by the veteran wild cedar before, destroying itself in the process. When one of the player asked to use probabilistic cannibalism to force its second save roll to be one no matter what, I'm starting to have a feeling that I have a group of players even the devils refuse to make a contract with. And thus the session ended with a bang. So let's analyze what just happened. So, originally this episode is supposed to demonstrate how dangerous enemies could be when they reach tier 2 after the player has reached license level 5 which requires more health and heat to be survivable. And then everything went fucking raw. I made up the NPC composition first before calling up the players and their builds to not directly counter them but they ended up making a team that completely counters my NPC, and not only that, they also hit damn near everything and crit far more often than normal, and then two of my top NPC just lost their fucking weapons, it's kinda ridiculous how lucky they got in this session. Anyway, practically every single player did their job amazingly well. Parsival served well as a defender, though in the turn where they were far away from the rest of the team, things got a little too close. Echoes of Creighton just blasted everything apart left and right, and if it wasn't for one trick pony, the ultra of the session, Texas Red, would still be around shooting people. As for Nilbog, congratulations, you are one incredibly annoying piece of shit, so basically you performed admirably as a goblin. Aside from that, the repeated usage of stabilize to clear conditions off allies was one thing I kept forgetting but as the session has demonstrated, it can get quite powerful. As for the NPC, oh my god, I can't use any NPC that uses fucking shotgun anymore, they just keep missing. The cataphract did do their job of yoing king people away okayishly and did in fact cause the only structure loss in the entire session, so bravo to them. The veteran pyro was rendered useless early in the game, but its relative toughness allowed it to survive and keep being a pest to the players. The veteran cedar was definitely the most annoying and destructive NPC of the entire session, earning the hate of some players for its mind. And finally, Texas Red, it didn't do much, and honestly, it better serves as a reminder that you should invest in some protections for your ultra if you want it to last longer. So how do you prevent this scenario, get some actual variety in your NPC composition, look at this, this is not balance, 
do not do this, and once again, invest in some defense for your ultra, like taking Argus armor or something, just to make it last a bit more dramatically longer because one way or another, the players will be fucking determined to kill this big target. As for the damage and the resource the player has lost or used up, you can check here. They certainly didn't lose much that's for sure. Anyway, it has been fun making this episode, big shout out to Akairio, SGT Briar, Hydronin, and Seventeen for participating in this session. That's all for now, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.